I'm happy to have you all here. This is a wonderful collaboration between our, as I said, Felicia Flag of Sherm, the Chamber, Felicia County Schools, and Career Source. I hope you're all here for the same reason that I am here, as is our pipeline is um, a little non-existent at the moment. So we're hoping to dig deep down to our students. Hi, Jason. Hi. Hi. To um, have our students um, be part of the future, and the future here in Volusia County specifically. So we're going to have, I hope everybody brought a laptop or some kind of tool that you can sign up. This, the sign up process is very easy. We're going to have a few presenters, and then at the end, Ken will talk us through the sign up, and then we will be registered. And again, this is free, and this is a wonderful tool, so I'm very excited to see this. And, and with that, I would like to introduce Ms. Christine Zakora from Career Source Felicia Flagler and our host for the day. Thank you, ma'am. So I'm just going to talk very briefly about probably some things that you are already aware of. I pulled some numbers together and I just wanted to give you a very, very high, very quick overview. At the bottom, in May of 2019, Volusia County had 243,185 that were employed. Obviously, we lost quite a few in May of 2020. We dipped down over 30,000. Almost a year later, we recovered almost all of them and gained another 30,343. The main numbers just came out a week ago for May of 2022, and we have 255,661 employed workers here in Volusia County. You will notice that the difference between May of 2022 and May of 2019 is only 12,476. You have heard this word a lot, and I do not like it. The Great Resignation. I don't know who coined it, but anybody who knows me, who's heard me speak, knows that I do not like it. I have heard on a podcast the Great Realignment. We have had lots of people leave their jobs, but they didn't leave their jobs because they didn't want to work. They left their jobs because they were realigning their work. And so there are multiple studies that will tell you that workers are looking for one of three things, and it's generally evenly split across those three. The first one is wages. So I might leave my one job, resign, but I realigned it to go to another business who's going to pay me more, because for me, that's my top priority. The second one is loyalty. I may want to work for somebody who I feel is invested in me. So we talk a lot to our businesses, all of whom I know have empty, vacant positions and are trying to fill those. But if you're not keeping an eye on the employees that you have, they're gonna, re they're, they're gonna resign and realign to somewhere else. Employees wanna feel invested in, they wanna feel that there is loyalty to, from the company to them, and you will find that many times that loyalty will then turn around back to the company. And then the third one is work-life balance. Everybody has heard it, 2020, if you could work virtually, you did. Those who couldn't, a lot of the hospitality and the retail, they were unemployed for about six, seven months until we gained most of those back. But that work-life balance, when you suddenly got to spend more time with your kids or your family, your husband, your wife, you found that there was something there that maybe you didn't know you were missing because it hadn't really been a part. And so that other third pot are people who are looking for that work-life balance. And so I say that because you all know, you've seen the job vacancy signs and people are looking for employees. So I've covered what maybe you could do for those that you currently have, but where do you find the new workers? And so today, really what we want to talk about is a pot of workers that businesses always seem to have shied away from. Those young adults, 16 to 24, people think hospitality, think, people think retail, we've heard soft skills, they don't know how to do this, they don't know who to do that. Think back to when you were that age and did anybody ever say that about you? We won't talk about what they said about me, but yes, I was 18 once and I was 18 and I did 18 behaviors. So we really want to talk today about that. I have three quick videos that I want to show you, and then I'm going to hand it off to Kelly Amy from Volusia County Schools. So I was one of our uh, 
transport is there at Halifax Health, and he um, came through the ER, and a couple times he asked about what it took to work down in the ED. He was 16, and it was kind of shocking to me when uh, he came down, but he stayed on top of things. He learned. He asked lots of questions. I've learned that the medical field isn't an easy job. Nobody can just walk in and do it. It definitely takes a lot of confidence because you don't know what walks through that door every day. So it's just been great seeing, seeing him uh, grow and uh, get more confident in his role. When I talk to my friends, they are all, they're shocked. They're, they don't know what to say. They don't believe me at some time. So I'm like, I'm for real, I'm for real work in the emergency department. He calls to ask if he can come in and pick up extra shifts. Um, he's just been, been a very good employee for the department. The opportunity presented itself, so I would definitely do it again. This experience has changed me, has built confidence and made me rethink about what I want to do in my career. I'm looking at being a PA, a physician's assistant, and so this has definitely made me find out what I really want to do after high school. I visit a lot of high schools, and my message to them is, today's world, kids are always pressured, you have to go to college, you have to go to college, you have to go to college, 12. Uh, I'm trying to explain to people that you can have a very good, long, lucrative career in manufacturing. And when you can pay out a two, come out of school for four years, and hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, versus you start out and make it five, you can make it forty-five dollars to fifty thousand dollars zero debt. It's a math equation. You know, younger folks that come in, they can actually learn a skill. Um, that will take them for a lifetime. I've learned so much about um, like manufacturing itself, the industry. There's a lot of different things to learn, but it's pretty easy to learn. If we bring them in and we train them, we know what we're getting, and we know that when we train them, they come with an ability and a skill set and knowledge to accomplish what it is that we're trying to do here in our business. Um, also, every day is new. You learn something every single day, um, and I love it. Young people still want to work these days. I think we have some great kids and doing some great things. Victoria is in the electrical uh, apprenticeship program. She is a first year apprentice. I started the job, my project manager thought it would give her a very good experience. It's more of an overall project that she can learn different aspects of the electrical industry. I heard about this program in high school and I went into it. So I went into this company and they have me. <laughs> My young journey is to change lights from old lamps to new LED lamps. I have a certain about bending pipe, install switches, receptacles. What I like about her the most is you can show her how to do things once, maybe twice. After that, she does it perfectly. It's it, a tremendous help. When you don't have to repeat yourself and retrain somebody every day to do the same thing, it's definitely a, a big help. I would like either be my, have a, my own company or be an engineer, a nutrition engineer. So, yeah. <laughs> I would definitely recommend you know other companies giving young workers you know an opportunity to come out and you know make a living and you know be successful in this trade. So you'll see that there's a common theme of there is a huge population out there that's eager to learn. They're super smart. Some businesses will tell you you don't have to break bad habits. You could hire somebody who maybe did something for 50 years and they think they know how to do it and you want them to do it a different way. So the young adults bring a lot to the table. They're very eager. Economic development will tell you that when we have prospective companies coming in, one of the questions they want to know is not how many college graduates we have, but how many high school students, what are we teaching them in, and how many of them stay within the community. You grab a high school student in their junior or senior year, you get their loyalty and their buy-in, and they will work for you. They'll work with you, maybe while they're co at Daytona State College or one of our many universities here, but it is a population that is extremely loyal and is an untapped one, because you'll notice there was no retail or hospitality there. And they are working in manufacturing, they're working in office jobs, hospitals, and so that's kind of the point of our video and what we're here to talk about today. That's for you, Kelly. Mm -hmm.